Welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how iLogic can work with iProperties. I've just created a standard part file. Click on the Inventor button, scroll down to iProperties, and let's go to the Project tab. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to pre-populate these fields. Let's close the window, and let's create a rule. Right-click, Add Rule. I'll call it iProperties, and let's click OK. Now let's expand the iProperties node of the snippets tree. Here's a lot of different snippets. Let's double click on part number. Now space, equal sign space, and a set of double quotation marks. Between those, I'll type part number, and let's click OK. Now let's click on the Inventor button, scroll down to iProperties, Project tab, and we see part number here. Let's click Close and open up our rule again. Expand the iProperties branch. Double click on Description. You may be starting to see my pattern here. Let's copy this text so it's on our clipboard. Now space, equal sign, space. Double quotation mark and I'll paste description within those. OK. Back to iProperties. Project tab. And here's our description. Next, we'll take a look at populating the stock number field. Let's close this window, open up our rule, expand the iProperties branch. Let's click on part number, and let's replace this with stock number. Now space equals sign space. And within those double quotations, I'll type stock number. Click OK. Back to iProperties. Project tab. Here's the stock number up above. Let's close this window. Now let's go to the Forms tab. Right click, select Add Form. On the left hand side, click the iProperties tab. Here we can access a number of different options. For example, we've got revision number. We can just drag it onto the form. Down below, we can change the label if we need to. We can, for example, make the field read only if needed. Let's click OK. And let's click on the form to launch it. Now here we can input the revision number. Let's click Done. Back to the iProperties window. Project tab. And here's the revision number I just entered. Let's fill out the next field in a slightly different way. Let's go to Parameters, and I'll create a user parameter. I'll call it Project. Click outside the field to register, and click Done. Now let's double click on our rule to open it up. I'm just going to comment out these lines of code. Expand the iProperties branch, double click on part number, and let's replace this text with project. Now space equals space, and let's select our user parameter, project, click OK, back to our form. Right click and edit. Here's the project parameter we just created. Let's drag it onto the form and click OK. Now let's enter My Project. Click Done. Back to the iProperties window, Project tab. And our project name appears. Lastly, let's take a look at the Custom tab. There's nothing here right now. Let's close the window. Let's double click to open our rule. Let's expand the iProperties branch. Position the cursor and let's double click on Custom. Let's replace this text with the word finish. Now space equals sign space. And let's use, let's say, stainless steel, for example, SS. OK. And back to the iProperties window. Click on the Inventor button. Scroll down to iProperties. Go to the Custom tab. Here is our new custom property. And this concludes our tutorial about working with iProperties.